Good evening, viewers. Thanks for joining me on Resource PNG. Lined up tonight, we speak to the Asian Development Bank, ADB, Institute of National Affairs, and the World Bank. But now let's join Nicole with country economist Mr. Aaron Batten from ADB for an overview of PNG's economic outlook. Good evening, viewers. Tonight on Resource PNG, we have Asian Development Bank, the country economist Mr. Aaron Batten here in the studio. Good evening to you. Good evening. How are you doing? I'm doing very well, thank you. Okay, we brought you on to discuss about the recent um, research that you've done on the economic growth expected to fall in 2013. What is the economic outlook for PNG or what are coming years? Mm. Well, the latest round of forecasting undertaken by the ADB shows that the outlook for PNG is broadly positive still, but with some risks emerging in the economy. Um, we expect economic growth this year to be about 7.5%, which is down from 8.9% last year. Mm -hmm. um, and that will be a result of LNG construction continuing to boost economic activity, as well as strong growth in the agriculture sectors and the spillovers of these two activities into wholesale and retail trade. Okay. Looking further forward though, and we do expect to see a large moderation in growth for 2013. Um, with the ADB forecast of 4.5% growth in that year, which is well below the rates recorded in previous years. Okay, so why do you think the economic growth is expected to fall in 2013? There's a number of drivers underlying this um, moderating GDP growth. Um, the first and most important one is will be the winding down of construction of the LNG project. And this will lead to a big drop off in activities for the construction sector in particular, but also with spillovers into other sectors of the economy like transport, aviation and shipping services, as well as wholesale and retail trade again. Further into the future too, we expect to see a slowing of growth in the agriculture sector. Mm -hmm. And this is largely because they will start to be negatively impacted from PNG's high exchange rate, which is reducing their international competitiveness. So what will this mean for Papua New Guinea? In the very short term, it might, might lead to a moderation in employment growth. Um, in 2013, but the demand for labour in the PNG economy is still very high, particularly for semi and skilled labour. Um, over the 2013 period, we also expect to see a moderation in price growth in inflation, which should help to protect um, incomes from rising prices, which reached about 10% last year. ADB's forecasts are for inflation to be 7% this year and then to further decline next year down to 6%. We're also starting to see some significant progress in the housing market with a, with a decline or sort of levelling off in prices for um, housing accommodation costs, particularly in Port Moresby and in Ley as well. Okay. So how can the government ensure that enough funding is allocated uh, to key service deliveries, priorities like health, education and um, infrastructure in the country? Well, this, be, this will be one of the major consequences of the slowdown in growth and that is an expected decline in government revenue over the next two to three years. This will be as a result of slowing growth, but also of the winding down of a number of mining and oil operations which exist in the country. And this will place increasing pressure on the government to be able to fund what is an increasing list of expenditure commitments that they've made, including free education and free health, as well as commitments made to the LNG equity stake um, and one-off election costs that they face. So protecting service delivery in this environment will be difficult. But we do believe that the government, with its low levels of public debt, has the ability to borrow over the short to medium term to continue funding those priority service delivery activities. And how can the government help create more job opportunities when this happens? So one of the key features of the last, what has now been a decade of economic growth in PNG has been sustained growth in employment creation. And this has led to a burgeoning middle class in PNG, which is having big effects on many sectors of the economy. One of the problems, however, though, is that this employment growth has tended to remain quite siloed in specific sectors of the economy, including the resources sector and in agriculture. And we haven't seen that broader income creation in other sectors of the economy. Um, and for that reason, the private sector has not been able to absorb PNG's rapidly expanding population. And recent estimates that we've made show that less than 10% of the PNG working age population are engaged in the formal private sector. So stimulating private sector employment growth has to be a major priority for government. Okay. Um, to do that, we highlight a number of things in our most recent report, including reducing the costs of doing business, promoting foreign investment, and also introducing competition into key sectors of the economy, like power and financial services. 
Now, the government has recently passed the organic law on sovereign wealth fund management. Mm. What will be the impact of this and how will it benefit PNG? Mm. Well, in our view, the sovereign wealth fund is a very good first step in ensuring that the revenue is accruing from the LNG project as well as all the other mining and, and energy projects going on in PNG are able to leverage into service delivery for the people of PNG. But in that frame of mind, um, it is a first step towards those goals. Um, the broader goals of improving public financial management still need to be obtained um, for the PNG government to really be able to translate mining wealth into services for the people. With this economic growth expected to fall, just give a clarity on how it will affect the industries, mm. especially when we have this boom in oil and um, gas in the country, mm. the gas industries in the country. Well, the effects of moderating growth will be quite different across different sectors of the economy, obviously. Um, the winding down of LNG construction will actually probably be quite a positive impact on other mining and energy projects in the country. Um, the end of the construction phase will release a lot of capacity into the economy for skilled labour. People like engineers and other skilled technicians related to that project will be looking for other sources of employment, um, as well as freeing up things like transport services and port services. So we should see positive benefits for other resource development projects during that period as that winds down. The flow through effects to other sectors of the economy, however, could be quite detrimental we're likely to see a lowering in demand for, for transport services and wholesale and retail trade, which might lower income growth in those sectors. Okay. Now, do you have any advice you're willing to give to the people of Papua New Guinea on how to, how to just help them prepare for this uh, expected economic growth fall in 2013? Mm. Okay. Well, I think like at the national level, um, sensible long-term fiscal management is always the best strategy for addressing these sorts of challenges. I think fortunately for the people of Papua New Guinea, they're now having access to a range of financial services that were non-existent even four or five years ago. We've seen a dramatic increase in microfinance activities, in rural banking services and mobile banking services. And this is giving people not only in urban areas but in, in rural areas to access to facilities to save their money to be able to handle periods when, when income growth declines. Okay, good. Now, recently we've been like hearing in the newspaper that there's been uh, payments to the landowners for the funds or the land entitlements and all that. Mm. Is there uh, advice you could give to our viewers watching how they could manage these funds that they get? Well, this is obviously an issue for the government to deal with and a very tricky one at that. Um, as I mentioned, in, in terms of the public financial management reforms, it's just in, ensuring that these funds are done in an accountable and transparent way and that they actually are delivered to the types of projects that are meant to improve the living standards of people in the rural areas being affected by the mining projects. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much for your time on the show. Thank you very much. You're watching Resource PNG. After the break, we join Executive Director of PNG Institute of National Affairs, Paul Barker. In 1988, he was appointed Special Advisor in the Prime Minister's Department, addressing particularly the economic sector and various governance issues, a post filled for 16 years until mid-2004, then becoming Technical Advisor with the European Delegation in the Solomon Islands until January 2006 to help develop and manage the major EU-funded post-conflict programs to Solomon 